Look at that. That's anaconda body under here. Let me lift her up a little bit. Where's her head gone? That's the question. Oh, she's right by my twig and berries. Look how beautifully she swims. Effortlessly she swims. For a big snake. They're really girthy. Look how big and fat they are. Isn't she big, fat and beautiful? Watch your nose come up now. Here we go, look at that. And that's exactly how they hunt. Who needs a face mask when you've got a green anaconda? What a beautiful, beautiful snake. Hello everyone, Dingo here. <laughs> and boy, have we got a video for you today. An absolute cracking video. I'm here in this magnificent swampy area with one of the most beautiful snakes in the whole world. And it's one of my favorite snakes on the planet. In fact, I went to South America last year looking for these snakes, but didn't manage to find one of them. Mainly because it was a wet season. And you wouldn't think, around me over here, We've got about a 12, 13 foot green anaconda sitting right here. That's right. They are aquatic species of boas, which means they love living. Beautiful water like this. Isn't it a magnificent hot day today? And then the Amazon, it gets super hot. And what happens? They hang out under the water. Look over here. You might be saying, Dingo, there's no snake there. There's no snake at all. Look at that. It's not just a snake. It's a huge snake. Yeah, some of her body over here. The rest is going through over here. Follow me this way. Right over here. I don't know if you can see. There's some more anaconda over there. Can you see it, Kirsty? Mm, a little bit. Get in ya. Get in the water a little bit. So come on, Kirsty, get in the water. Get in the reeds here. Look at that. That's anaconda body under here. Let me lift her up a little bit. Where's her head gone? That's the question. And they absolutely love hanging out in this kind of an environment. Here she comes. Oh, she's bent right behind my bum. And what they'll do, they ambush predators that are hang out. There she is. Hello, my girl. This is Dot, guys. I don't want to get a bite. She's not very tame. As far as anacondas go, she's pretty relaxed. Oh, she's right by my twig and berries. Don't bite me. Oh, don't bite me. She's still there. Right on my meat and two veg. Let's pull up. There we go. No need to go there, my girl. Look at this. I want to just show you a little bit of what she looks like. Look at the head on this snake. So what will happen is she'll lie in the water, just her nose poking out the water, waiting for something like a capybara, even uh, a caiman, a crocodilian species. They'll eat those, they'll eat almost anything down in South America. An absolutely magnificent snake. And green anacondas are the heaviest body snakes you get anywhere in the world. They have a magnificent orange blush either side of their face there. And look at the strange shape of that head. That head has ah, right at the front of the head. And what she'll do, let's see if she wants to put her head up now. Where's her head gone? Oh, her head's already by my knee here. It's absolutely amazing how quickly a big snake can vanish. I mean, we've got snake all over here. Here's her tail. Look at her tail there. We've got literally over four meters of anaconda all over here. And in about this deep, about a foot, foot and a half of water, completely disappears. Look at her spots going there. Those spots help with camouflage. Beautiful green anacondas. The world's heaviest snake. What we're going to do though, this episode, it's all about swimming with Dot. And although this is her natural kind of habitat, I love bringing her out here for enrichment. She spends time kind of getting to know what's going on and experiencing different smells and aromas and stuff. It's absolutely lovely for her. There are fish cruising around, there are frogs, there's all kinds of things here. What we're going to do is I want you to see how she swims, how she's been made and created specifically to go in an aquatic lifestyle. So we're going to take her into a swimming pool where we can actually film her under the water, see her moving. A lot of the other swimming with have been on top of the water, snakes swimming on top, anacondas, you can see here, completely at home underneath the water. Isn't it absolutely incredible? Let's go take her up to the pool now and we'll see her under the pool where it's nice and clear. Let's get going. First, keep still, right next to your knee. Massive spider. Oh 
<laughs> That's what's splash. beautiful, guys. Look at the size of you see it there. Go right down, it's right underneath you. Huge spider. I'll put my fingers by. Oh, there. Hang on, no, don't, don't. don't There's a spider there, guys. Look at the size of the spider cruising on top of the water. Also at home in the water, right Jeez. by Kirsty's leg. Look that at him. Is huge. Look at him. I don't know if he can bite me. Don't bite me, buddy. <laughs> Isn't it awesome? So let's go get, get into the swimming pool. Let's spend some time with Dot in a natural kind of aquatic lifestyle. Woohoo! All right, guys, here we are. Look at the pool. Isn't she beautiful? She just wants to go cruising and swimming. It's absolutely incredible. Some people might say, Dingo, the, the salt or the chlorine will affect her. Absolute nonsense. She's not a fish. She's not breathing in the water. She wants to go though. So let's get in here. Oh. She'll cruise around for a bit, try to go out, and then hopefully she'll just relax a little bit more. She'll come up to the top now, get some. She'll come up to the top. And with all the snakes that we've seen, she'll probably, for a while, just cruise around. There's not much cover for her. So she'll cruise around the top, and then hopefully just now, when she relaxes, she'll go under the water. Look how beautifully she swims, effortlessly she swims, for a big snake. And that's one of the reasons these snakes are so aquatic. They are such heavy snakes. In fact, a four meter green anaconda like this will weigh as much as a six meter reticulated python. They're really girthy. Look how big and fat they are. Isn't she big, fat and beautiful? And she's a beautiful swimmer. Effortlessly goes through the water. So what they'll do in the wild, they'll swim on top of the water like that. Look how easily she climbs out. But then also, as you saw down there in the marsh, where there's more cover for her. So if we had a whole bunch of cover in here, she would hang out at the bottom. And as she relaxes here, what she should do is start spending more time at the bottom. And then we're gonna get a GoPro in here, and we're gonna follow her out on the bottom. See her tongue flicking, she can smell under the water. It's absolutely incredible. As you can see, she's calmed down a little bit. She's not cruising around the top of the water, but she's completely, look at that. She's right around me, she's holding on. And unfortunately, she's not spending a lot of time under the water, but that tongue's flicking here. So if we drop her head under the water here, you'll see some tongue flicks. Look at that, isn't that incredible? Tongue flicking out and what she's doing, just like she would on land. Flicking, breathing, what's going on? I'm exploring, watch her nose come up now. Here we go, look at that. And that's exactly how they hunt. They'll stay like in that position, waiting for a capybara or something like that to come along the banks of the water or in that shallow water to walk through it. And then wah, she'll bite it straight away. One of the most notorious snakes with one of the worst reputations of any snake in the planet. I mean, when you say anaconda, one thinks about the anaconda movie. Meanwhile, look at this. She's an absolute sweetheart. Wouldn't hurt a fly. She's bitten me about three times, but uh, not today. Not yet. Hello, my girl. And look how she's just calmed down a bit. Now she's understood. Okay, we're in a different environment. If this was full of reeds and logs and stuff, she'd be hanging around the bottom. Tongue flicking. Okay, let's just put her head under one more time. Waiting for her to finish breathing out. Get that big breath. There we go, look at that. And there's a tongue flicking. Blocks off her nostrils, tongue flicking. Isn't it beautiful? And isn't that absolutely incredible? As you can see, even under the water, that forked tongue flicking there. And she's not trying to drink the water, for those of you who don't know how snakes work. What she's doing, forked tongue going out, 
picking up sand particles even underneath the water. It's absolutely a miracle that snakes can can smell and uh, and pick up sand particles under the water. And that's what she's doing. Picking those up brings them into her mouth, right up to the Jacobson's organ, and that'll interpret those smells and say, so, okay, it's a fish, it's a it's a capybara, it's a human being, it's a caiman. Get out the way, or it's food time. Absolutely magnificent snakes. And as I said previously, with one of the nastiest reputations of any snake in the world, there are two species of anaconda. The yellow anaconda, which are smaller, get to about three meters. Uh, and then this big, beautiful green anaconda. And the females get much larger than the males, in fact. Um, recorded uh, right up to seven meters, but it's the weight that's so impressive. And we're talking there, 200 kgs of green anaconda dot at the moment she's about 50 kilos something around there which is about 110 pounds she's still got some growing to do but the way she's been smashing rabbits lately she's going to get there rather soon she's an absolute darling this snake look at her hey who needs a face mask when you got a green anaconda what a beautiful beautiful snake